and thank you for the wonderful time of worship too. I'm ready to go, are you? Could you guys just like come over to my house every morning? Just get me going, get the worship and praise going. He is holy. I, that was the theme, uh, the underlying theme certainly of, um, of our praise and worship music this morning. And what a, what a great setup for the rest of our day. Um, now, mo the reason most of you are here today is because of these next two ladies, Bobby and Tony Lee. Uh, they are, yes, let's absolutely. Uh, they are our keynote speakers this morning, and they're also the hosts and founders of this annual women's conference here in San Diego. Uh, this is the eighth annual, and it's growing. Bobby and Tony Lee are founders of Daily Disciples Ministries and a marketing and media company called Media for Women Enterprises. They are authors and speakers, radio hosts of the Way for Today. Way for Today, many of you listen to them on K Praise, KPRZ, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. They are, in keeping with our theme today, best friends, BFFs. But they, are definite, they definitely understand the real issues of friendship, which they are here to share with you today. Now, before they do come up, uh, the bo both gals did ask that, that uh, I, I let you know they'd like to share well, a little something, a little something for you to look at for kind of a blast from the past, from their very first video webcast, just to show how far they've come. Okay. Testing. This is hard. I couldn't do this for nice now. Nice sweatshirt. Sure you could. I need, no, I can't. I am going to fall off. <laughs> I am not. I don't even have a full cheek on the chair. <laughs> I need my own chair. Bobby, Do you have Tony another Lee. one? Do you Bobby, have another one? Do you have another what? Another chair? I'll have to bring it over, huh? We have one outside. Oh. Is this working? Hello, yeah. hello. I think it's working. Hi. <laughs> okay. We're going to, let's do something serious. Though. All right. Um, yeah, because we are very serious. We're going to talk about Esther. Esther. Yeah. She's we funny. Record, let's record it today. <laughs> I look terrible. Once is enough. <laughs> I'm not convinced this is going to be a really good stand for us. Let's move this out of the way just in case. Um, yeah, a blast from the past. Our very first um, webcast. How many years ago was that, T.L., that we did that? Seven, I yeah. think? Yeah. No, it was a long time ago. <laughs> and I was going, Bobby, Tony Lee, Bobby, Tony Lee. Just that's how crazy it was. Um, thanks for being here. Are you guys, guys glad to be here this morning? Um, You know how we're all, you know, most of us in this room are um, Christians and, and you know, we're, we're going to be doing a lot today talking about friendship and, and really giving the glory to God for being our bestest friend and giving us each other as friends. But as friends, um, you know, Tony Lee and I did this, uh, that, that little video was about seven years ago. And, and you can see we've, we've come a long ways, but in some ways we haven't. We're the same as we were then. We're still arguing over the, the chair and, you know, and doing all the <laughs> things we that we do. That's good. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was, and that video used to be on YouTube, and I think we pulled it. It had so many views, and we're like, oh, no, this is probably not a good representation <laughs> of what we do. But at the same time, it's real, isn't it? And it's about real friendship. It's about real life. It's, um, it's learning to be friends and have relationships that have depth and meaning. And that's why you're here. You're here because maybe one of your friends dragged you here or said, hey, you know, I got a ticket for you or uh, let's go to coffee Saturday and oh, it just happens to be at this event, you know, that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> But uh, we're glad you're here. We're going to share a little bit about our, some, most of you, some of you probably know us, some of you may not, but we've been friends for a long time. Um, I was one of those girls that, as uh, Leah was saying in the beginning, 
I'm not from Southern California. I'm a Southern girl, however. So anybody in the, in the crowd from the South? Yes. Yes. Bless your heart. You know, there's a funny thing in the South that you can criticize anybody as long as you say, bless your heart before it. <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know if God just has a way of making it okay, or we feel like it's okay, but I was raised in Tennessee. Some people think I'm from Texas, but I'm not, and I'm not related to Reba. Um, <laughs> although most of us in the South are related in some form or fashion. <laughs> And we have family reunions at the local Walmart. And that's just the, the facts. When my stepdaughter went to Tennessee with me when she was only about 10 years old, Christy, she said to uh, her dad when we left Walmart, Daddy, all of Bobby's family is in Walmart. <laughs> and that was true to a certain extent. But I was raised in the South. I, I grew up in uh, Baptist church, Southern Baptist. Any good Southern Baptists in the crowd today? Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I've learned through the years that um, it doesn't matter what church we go to. We all represent different churches. I don't even know how many churches are represented here today. But the bottom line is that we believe in the one true God, in Jesus Christ. And so that's, that's, what, I'm all, that's what we're all about. But I was raised in the South, and just a little brief story before I turn it over to TL. I will let her speak at some point. <laughs> um, because I have to, otherwise, you know, just, but I, I grew up in uh, Southern Baptist Church in a small town, and I remember walking down the aisle when I was nine years old to accept Jesus as my Savior, and for many years, I did not realize that you did not have to walk down the aisle to accept Jesus, and uh, it didn't count otherwise, and that's not true, obviously, but that's just kind of when I was a child, we walked, you know, pastors stood at the front and step out into the aisle and come down to accept Jesus. And I was scared to do that, but I remember when God is pulling on your heart, you know, you know he's stirring in you. And I remember that at a very young age. And, but my, I grew up in a home life, though, that wasn't as, as accepting. My mother, many of you out here in the audience today may be mothers who are taking your children to church, and your husband is not going with you. In my situation, my dad not only didn't go with us, he hated everything about church, he did not want anything to do with God, and there was a lot of warfare in our, in our home, to be honest, because of that. But just in that faithfulness, in those years of my mom taking us, I grew up knowing that Jesus was always with me. He was always with me. And I could, I could stay in my room at night, and no matter what happened, I would always say to Jesus, you know, Jesus, I have all these friends. We have wonderful girlfriends that we can speak to, but... Sometimes they say things that may not be the best advice, even though they have the best for me in their hearts. But I always know if I tell you, you're going to give me the perfect answer. And if I tell you, you're going to keep the secret that I'm asking. Like, you're not going to do anything to hurt me. He was always my best friend. And as years passed, and I went to college and, and moved on, in my home with my father, my relationship was not very good. And to be honest, there was a level of abuse even in, in my home life. And what happens with us a lot of times as women especially is that we begin to associate our heavenly father with our earthly father. And it's just part of this nature. It's kind of just what begins to become ingrained in us and how we look at life. And so for a period of time in my life, you know, I didn't know who I could trust. If your earthly father is the representation of what you want heavenly father to be, it can be difficult. And so we live life, don't we, as we get older and we go through things and we realize that, yes, Jesus is with us, but we need Jesus with skin on around us. And we need, so we need to know what it is that God is our friend. Some of you today, we're going to talk about how you need to know today that Jesus is your friend. He's your best friend. God is with you. And that is very biblical and very scriptural. But we need each other at times to be Jesus with skin on. Not the one who's always... Tony Lee and I through the years have, uh, have sometimes been Jesus with skin on a little bit too much. You know, we like that Jesus in the Bible with the whip 
or the Jesus <laughs> doing the, you know, the Beatitudes or thou shalt or whatever. And, and we can be very, I think, sometimes almost overly that verse, you know, well, I'm just telling you the truth in love. I really love you. You got to hear me. I'm telling you the truth. Or, you know, I've been praying for you and God's given me a word. Come on, let's go sit down. Let's pray first, though. Lord, I just pray that Tony Lee can receive what I need to tell her right now. <laughs> because, Lord, I know you've put this on my heart to tell her this. And I just pray that she doesn't, you know, have any sin in her response. <laughs> Always sounds better with an accent, doesn't it? <laughs> so... As years passed, it was funny because I spent my, I, I wanted a career. I decided to leave Tennessee and go to the big city of Nashville. For some reason, Nashville wasn't in the South, even though I've learned it is. Uh, it had more than a thousand people in it, so it had to be bigger. Uh, it had to be, you know, not, a, I went to college in Kentucky and that, I knew I went North then. It was an hour from home, but I went across the border. But I pursued a path where my career became my life, my identity. I didn't need friends. I didn't need friends anymore. See, I'm an executive chick. I've made my way. I've, you know, I'm somebody. I have a business card with letters after my name and a title. That was my identity for many, many years. And I still had Jesus. I really did. Jesus was all, because I felt like, oh, yeah, I, I drive, you know, you drive in your car and you just talk to Jesus, because Jesus was always in the passenger seat. Lord, help me today. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. That was my prayer for years. And he was so good about doing that. Until one day, about my early 30s, and life was great, and my career was very successful, I didn't know where Jesus went all of a sudden. And things started happening in my life that brought about change. You see, I was in church my whole life. And I was going to church during this time. I'd moved to Southern California and married and was driving 70 miles to L.A. on a job. And I remember sitting in church because I went to church because that's what you're supposed to do. Did you know that? You're supposed to go to church? So I went to church. But you see, I, didn't, I wasn't one of those girls who did all those church things because I, I wasn't like them. I was so glad that there was a church that those women could do those things in, though. You know, retreats and Bible studies and... Um, teas. Teas. Oh, teas were my... I, I could not understand what women did at teas. What do you do at a tea? <laughs> what do you mean that you decorate a table? What does that mean? I had no clue. Like, what... It, I did not understand a tea until somebody, I had to go one time because somebody bought me a ticket and I felt bad. And I went and I was still, after I got there, I did not know what to do at the tea. But that's how it was until God stepped in to change my life. Because, you know, I woke up one day and I realized, who am I going to call if something happens? I had nobody. I had acquaintances. I had people, I had Jesus, but I didn't have Jesus with skin on. And you can get our testimonies out in the lobby, but through the course of our um, series of events, Tony Lee and I met at, that, at a church Bible study because God said to me one day, you're going to join this women's Bible study. And from then, that was about 10, 12 years ago, had no idea I would ever end up doing anything like this, ever. And I think Tony Lee is going to share about the first one we did eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Late, yeah. You well, wanna, I was going to share it tonight, but I can share it. You want to share it this morning? Yeah. yeah. Because we, uh, this is our eighth one. Thank you guys for being here so much because truly putting these things on, when God says go out and do something, you're going to need a lot of, Jesus is the skins on to keep encouraging you to go. Today, you're going to leave here knowing you've got people around you who are going to encourage you and support you and give you that opportunity because despite where you may have come from, 
despite your family, despite maybe how you were raised, despite any obstacles in your life, you have Jesus, and he has a plan for you. And he's put people around you just to encourage you and make sure you stay on that path. Very nice. Was that nice? Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah, you did a good job. That was good. I've come a long way, so. And, and if, you were here, if you were here the last couple of years, did, have you been here when we had the whiteboard on the, the stage? Uh, we, we made her take they a whiteboard me, down. They said I've, we have outgrown the whiteboard. And I am very insulted, and I have to say that <laughs> I'm actually fearful to teach because I don't have my whiteboard. You have a whiteboard to draw stick people on. How do you teach if you can't draw stick people to represent what you're saying? <laughs> okay, so Bobby, um, Bobby's from the South, you know, so everything sounds so nice. And it's true, what Lee was saying about tea, she was so right. I went there and I, I asked someone for iced tea and she said, sweet tea or, or unsweetened tea. And I said, is sweet tea mean it's in a machine and unsweetened tea means it's a, like, I went through this whole thing and then I finally said, okay, can you bring me a mocha? And they go, mocha? What the mocha? And I thought, oh boy, this is a whole different world out here in the South because I was raised in New Jersey right next to New York, yeah, <laughs> right next to New York City. And New Yorkers just say it the way it is, and they live on coffee. It's morning to night. And, um, and I'm so used to not really beating around the bush. I'm very used to just going straight, straight for it. And then becoming an ICU nurse. Um, I actually went to Point Loma Nazarene U University to become a nurse, you know. <laughs> And then I ended up working at Sharp Memorial Hospital for years, and I specialized, I know we've got some of them there, and I specialized in um, ICU and especially with heart transplantation. So I love, like, the intensity of it. And I've got to tell you, there's no, you don't mince words when you're working in ICU. So when Bobby and I first came together, it was not, it was like that video. It really was. We just could not get together. And the first thing we did, the first project was write Bible studies. And I was all about the heart of the Bible study. And she was all about the sentence structure. And I used to say, but if you change the way I wrote that, it doesn't get to the heart. And she said, but it doesn't make any sense. So who would get to the heart? That's how we you began. Know, subject verb disagreement, you know, you know, participle phrases. It is a miracle. A miracle. Yeah. Don't you say? Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I have, an, I have another friend in the audience, Melinda and Pat. I've known them since high school. Melinda is so nice to be with. Whenever I'm with Melinda, all she does is agree with me. She lets me cry. She tells me I'm right all the time. She's been my friend forever. And you can see why. But this, 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 I'm a can this? be a little bit of a challenge with that southern accent. That throws you for a loop. But anyway, I'll Bless her heart. I'll back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Catherine, you're another southerner up there, I know. So I want to uh, back up a little bit and just share um, how I came to know Christ. Uh, I was actually raised in a very strong Italian Catholic family in New Jersey. And um, yes. And I really do appreciate the Catholic Church because they taught me the right Jesus, and I uh, worshiped at the right holidays, you know, for the right reasons, and I'm very thankful for that. But when we talk about friendship with God, that wasn't really my experience in the Catholic Church. It was more about reverence, and it was more about 911 prayers. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, fix this. Oh, Lord. Okay, it, was, it wasn't really about a relationship. It wasn't about necessarily a friendship. Well, we moved from, my family moved from New Jersey to Fullerton, uh, California, Orange County. And um, after a year, my mom came to know Christ through this friendship Bible coffee. And for two weeks straight, it started in Jan January 31st, she started saying to me, I need you need to come to know Jesus personally as your Lord and Savior. He needs to be your friend. And I didn't know what it meant, but I did know that she had really changed. And I really didn't like it. And, uh, and at the time, she, I was 14, and I was thinking, 
if I have to do something that's going to make me look like that, that's going to be a problem. So she said to me, finally, after two weeks, and it was a Sunday morning, and she said, why won't you do this? Like, mothers are so good like that, especially the Italian mothers. Why won't you eat this food? And um, I said, I'm just afraid. I said, I'm afraid I'll turn into that, like to you. And I'm afraid that, you know, if I give my life to God, he'll, I can't be a teenager anymore. And, um, and she said, but when you go through life, wouldn't you rather to know that God was, is really with you and closely with you? than to go through life wondering where he was. Well, that made a lot of sense to me, even as a 14-year-old. So she didn't know this, but I went upstairs, and I got on my knees, and I said, God, if you're listening, um, I, my mother's telling me to do this. And really, I don't want to because I am afraid. But if you want me to do this, then you're going to need to tell me. And that was it. And we left for Mass. Well, we sat in the same place, the same pew, and the same priest opened up the service. And, uh, but this time, he did a little differently. And with his big, flowing, beautiful robe, he said, Why are you afraid to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? <laughs> <laughs> this Mass is being dedicated to all who are afraid. And I looked at my mother and I went, oh, God's an eavesdropper. He heard that prayer. And I really did. I accepted the Lord right there in the Catholic Church. And it probably took around two weeks till I was just like my mother. <laughs> and I have to say, um, I, I've said to the Lord a lot, thinking about friendships, my friendship with Melinda, my friendship with Bobby, uh, my friendship with God, I can say that out of all the friendships, all the relationships in my family, the more people you have in your family, the more trouble you have, the more people you have in your life, the more problems you have to pray over. And I can really say that the best friend in the world is my little dog, Sammy. <laughs> he is the easiest relationship I have ever had. I've never had a dog. I turn 47, I get a dog. I'm so happy now. He just loves me regardless. And he reminds me of the Lord. And you can become his Facebook friend because he has his own page. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I say that because when I think about my friendship with God even, I think there are times that the verse on my tombstone is going to say, my ways are not your ways, Tony Lee, and my thoughts were not your thoughts, but now they are. Because I'll be dead. <laughs> and then I'll think just like God, and that'll be great. Because it seems like in order to really walk with the Lord, which I have to tell you, there's nothing that compares to knowing the Lord. But walking with the Lord, in that relationship... Friendships have to adapt and conform. Jesus already conformed, which is why I can have a friendship with God. So that means now it's my part. So the rest of this walk means I need to conform to him. And if we look back at Abraham, who is called the what? friend of God. Do you know that I don't think Abraham ever realized he was a friend of God? Abraham never says they're friends. God doesn't ever say to Abraham he was a friend. Jehoshaphat tells us in 2 Chronicles. Isaiah 40 verse 8 tells us they were friends. And James 2.23 tells us that because Abraham believed, it was accredited to him as righteousness as the friend of God. And our faith starts because of Abraham's belief. But I think if you would have asked Abraham while he walked on the earth, were you God's friend? I think he would have said, well, I knew when he was coming because you saw that in the word. He would know that this is the presence of God or this is God's voice. But he didn't have that promised child till he was 100 years old. 
He had a lot of waiting to do. And you know what? If I want a latte and I ask my friend to get it, I want it now. So I don't know if I would have interpreted all that waiting and all that promising as being very friendly. And then we look at Moses. Now, if anybody would have been a friend of God, you would have thought Moses would have been a friend of God because he was up on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. He had the nerve to say to God, he was the first one that said to God, can I see your glory? Can I see you, God? And God said, no, but I'll let you see the back. And he wrote the Ten Commandments and he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And God tells us in Hebrews 3, that Moses was faithful as a servant in God's entire house. God tells Miriam and Aaron in Numbers that um, how can you criticize Moses? Because with other prophets, I speak with dreams. But with Moses, I speak face to face. And you would think that they would be friends, but instead... God said he was just a faithful servant. But then we hit the time of Jesus. And Jesus says to his disciples right before he goes to the cross, I don't call you servants any longer. Because servants don't know what their, their uh, master is doing. I now call you friends. And so what is it to be a friend with Jesus? How can we be a friend with Jesus? Now we know that all that it takes to become a friend with Jesus is asking the Lord Jesus to come into our heart, to say, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't make it to heaven without you. I know that I need you, God. It's that step of belief that Abraham had. But then it's also, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey me. The obedience is an illustration of what Moses did by being faithful. So what Jesus is asking us to be is a faithful friend. He wants us to be faithful to him. And you know what that really comes down to? Really just one word, and it is to absolutely know that God loves you. In that love, he has put his spirit in your heart and he will never leave you, ever. Our problem comes down to, because my heart is down here and my mind is up there, they don't always go together. But I have prayed and prayed, Lord, don't even let me get in the way of your will. Do whatever it takes in my life, because I know walking with you is the best, so don't even let me get in, in the way. So you know what God did? gave me her. <laughs> because Bobby is faithful. She, when she hears from the Lord, she goes, we're going to do it. And I go, no, we're not. Always the first reaction. And that's what happened to these events. Eight years ago. All, see, see what you just said? What? That's always your reaction. It, no more. Oh. Today? <laughs> today's a new day. A great cloud of witnesses. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So eight years ago, well, eight-ish, eight, a little eight, more than eight. 2005, 2005. She comes to me, we're teaching Bible studies, and the Bible studies are growing, and we're now on the radio, and so we're doing some stuff, and she comes to me, and she says, do you want to tell this first part of how God you struggled told with the me, Lord? God said we need to start doing a conference. Didn't want to do a conference, had no interest in it. But you know, when God is telling you something, he wins. He's going to keep telling you. You're going to see it on billboards. You're going to hear it in a song. You're going to hear all, you know, it's going to be on the floor somewhere, dropped a piece of paper, right? So I kept telling Tia, we're going to, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we have to figure this out. And she kept saying, no. God no. might be calling you to do it, but he's not calling me. <laughs> have fun doing your conference. Yeah, like... She That's still, what she I She still does that to me, actually. Yeah, no more. But, oh, no more. Today's That's no more. That's what I said today. Oh, wow. Today's all going to change. So, <laughs> so, so. Um, you heard it, right? Okay, no more, right. 
I want it to be on my tombstone. She finally got the mind of Christ. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> she finally got it. Um, so one day we were at Point Loma. I had to do something here because this was my alumni school. And so I was showing her this room and just the campus a little bit. And she said, I think we're supposed to have a conference in this room. I said, oh, you are really crazy now. We're not going to do this. So we went back and forth about this. And um, she came to me and she said, listen, TL, you really have to go to the Lord because he won't let this go. And this this is both of us. This isn't me. And I even came up with a date. We had a date. Yeah. 7-23. What was it? 7-23. Okay, July 23rd. So all my family was gone that night. And so I said, okay, I'm going to, Lord, I'm going to come to you and ask you, do you want us to have a conference? But I really need to hear from you, Lord, because if we're going to do this, I don't want to keep fighting it in my mind. And um, I opened up the chronological Bible. And it was Second Chronicles 7. When I hit verse 10, I knew. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done. Okay? This is for you. That's what it's about. So, People to go home glad of heart. That's right. That's so right. that day was quite a challenge for us. And Bobby said, why do you think today was so hard? And I said, because the Lord didn't say we'd go away happy <laughs> with heart. He said the people would. So every year we say, okay, God's promising the people will go away happy. So that is your promise for today. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, it's, it's, we, we talk a lot about you need a friend. You you. The Lord is going to show you things. And I just want to read out of, of John um, 15 for a moment. It's actually where he's with his disciples for the last time. And let me just, uh, there's so many things here I was looking at. The, um, the vine. You know, in, in the last few moments of Jesus' life before he went to the cross, he has this intimate time with his disciples. And we only really get that from the Gospel of John. And in John 15, he talks about um, uh, being on the vine, and he's the true vine. And we go into verse 9 of chapter 15, and Jesus says, and I have to picture Jesus sitting with the, with the 12 disciples. So I always like to think Jesus is with us right now. And if you could just picture Jesus here sitting on the altar up here, sitting on the edge of the stage, and he's talking to us. And he says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. Mm -hmm. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. And I love this next verse. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you may go and bear fruit. And so there's a lot of things in this section of verses. One is, he starts out by talking about love. Love means different things to all of us in different ways. But God's love is what we have to really understand, to abide and remain in God's love. That's a command, to love each other as we love ourselves, to love in a love that Jesus says is beyond, it's beyond our emotions, it's beyond our personalities, it's beyond the, the, the stuff of life, it's beyond those things that we as women go, ugh, I like you a lot, but, or a lot of times where I love you in the Lord, right? You know, I, I love you in the Lord. 
Don't you know that God knows what we mean when we say that? It's kind of like sometimes we're always thinking, like God's going to somehow believe our words instead of our hearts. And I think we need to be praying. And this is kind of the, one of the big takeaway messages from today. If you're here today, you're not here because you heard it on the radio or you got an email or somebody Facebooked you or somebody dragged you here. You are here for one reason and one reason only. Because God brought you here. That's it. He brought you here. Every single one of you has a divine appointment in this place today. Amen? Yes. Period. That's why you're here. We've done all kinds of talks and groups and seen all kinds. It doesn't matter. Small, large, big, doesn't matter the venue or the room or anything else. The only thing that matters is that you know you're here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you without even knowing the details, one of the big purposes today is that you know that you're to abide in his love and that he chose you. He chose you. I had somebody come up to me yesterday, literally yesterday, we were setting up out in the lobby and this girl comes up to me, she works on campus, and she has been to our conferences in the past, and she's been to our Bible studies, but she couldn't be here today. And so she's giving me this hug, and she's talking about a puppy that she went and got about six months ago. Tony Lee comes home one day with Calva with a, uh, at the office with a puppy. She's never had a puppy before. And I am like, are you kidding me? Do you know what a puppy does? Do you have any idea what a puppy does? I, have, I am from the South. We didn't have puppies. We had litters of puppies. I had puppies for years and dogs for years and years and years. And I, I have written devotionals. You'll read, if you read our devotionals, many of the older devotionals are about Buddy, my dog. Because God just has a way of showing his love in a dog. So T.L. must have been feeling lonely and needing love to go get this puppy. Because, and that's why Sammy's now her best friend. I'm trying not to take offense to it, but, you know, it's just the way it is. I, I love him, too. But I remember whenever I went to get Buddy, my last dog that I had was a puppy, and my mom called me. We were looking for a dog that was a basset hound, and I was looking for a certain kind of puppy. And we looked all over the place. You know, in California, they're like a million dollars for a puppy. And so my mom calls me from Tennessee. And it's a trailer park in Tennessee that has these puppies. <laughs> so I fly to Tennessee, literally. Seriously, true story. And I go out because <laughs> I think he was like $25, you know, to go get him. And I just knew it had to be the Lord because I didn't, he just got, he's a, he's a Tennessee puppy. He's got to be, I got to bring this puppy to California. You know, I just got to go get him. But I remember going out and there's a pen, a dog pen, of these puppies and they're just filthy muddy puppies you know they're just all over the place and you know how puppies are just happy and they're just he's like seven weeks old and there's 15 puppies and I walk over to this to the pen and and I remember looking at them and I walked over and I want I want and I grabbed him and I leaned over and I I picked him up and I looked at him like this and, you know he's just you know, got that puppy breath, you know, in your face. And, puppy. And I looked at him and I said, you're my buddy. And I'm taking you back to California. I chose him. He didn't choose me. I went to that pen with these dirty little puppies. And I picked my buddy up. And I chose him. And that is what Jesus, T.L. went to Helen Woodward and all these dogs in the crates and they walk over and there's little Sammy. He's five months old. He's a poodle Bichon mix and hasn't had a haircut or a bath. It didn't look like in five months. He had been from shelter to shelter to shelter and they bring Sammy home and I thought the same thing. She walked in and she walked over and she said, you're my little Samuel. And he's named Sammy for Samuel. 
who was raised in the temple. His mother gave him up to go be in the temple. And little Sammy didn't have a home for five months. And even after all that time, he's finally becoming our friend. Mm -hmm. But God, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. I'm not asking you today. Jesus is saying, I'm not asking you today to try to be my friend. You see, we, we want to spin our wheels and please each other and we want to be so good. We really do. We want to be so good to each other. We want to be good friends. We want everybody to like us. And we want Jesus to just, Lord, just approve me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Lord, just approve me. And, and you've got to know today he's saying, done. It's already done. I chose you. And not only did I choose you, you were in that dirty pen. You're all muddy and dirty, but I picked you up and I got you and I, I held you. And he's still holding us. See, we're still dirty. But by his blood, we've been made clean. The moment he picks us up and we say, all we have to say is to receive Jesus is we say, yes, I want you. I want you to hold me in your arms. I want you to be my daddy God. I want to crawl up in your lap. I, want to be, I, want, I need you to be my best friend. Isn't that the greatest one in the world? I mean, isn't it something today, if many of you today are here for various reasons, I know without knowing there's a lot of hurt in this room for various reasons. And we want you to stay all day. And if, if you're listening now and you're here and someone needs to come, this afternoon we have Carol LeBeau speaking, June Hunt speaking, Deanna Ramsey performing again in worship, Crimson Bridge performing again, and T.L. and I closing out the day. This afternoon is going to be simply amazing. If there's women in your lives that need to be here this afternoon, you get on the phone and you call them and tell them just to come, and they can just walk right in. Do that as a friend with Jesus with skin on, because at the very end, not only are you going to hear amazing stories and testimonies and, and hopefully just biblical application and praise and worship and love and friendship. But we're also going to have a time of prayer at the very end because I, we're not doing this. I mean, there's a lot of things we could be doing today. But the truth is we're here because we are seeking the Lord to pour out his spirit upon us in a way that for whatever we need, some of us today need to be renewed and restored. Some of us need to have forgiveness in our hearts for people. Some of us need to come back to some of our friends or family members or whoever that may be. And that's what this day is about. But we're going to start by hoping and making sure you understand that Jesus is our bestest friend of all. And you know what the cool thing about it is? I didn't know whenever I picked Buddy up in that pen and brought him home. I did not know his personality. I did not know how my life was going to be with him or in our family. I did not know all the things that I was going to have to learn about this Basset Hound and his ways. And I, and I had an older Basset Hound at the time who, you know, when I brought Buddy home, my other dog looked at me, and I, could, I speak dog. And, and, and Baggins looked at me, and I knew he was saying, did you have to bring this thing home? You know? <laughs> and sometimes as friends, we have those relationships where it's like, you may have, you know, your husband at times may say, really, this is your friend? Really, did you have to bring her home? You know? <laughs> no, we do. And I remember with Buddy not knowing. I didn't know that eight and a half years later, he would come down with a terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. And I would have to do one of the most difficult things I've ever done, which was to have to terminate his life because he was dying from a painful cancer. But you see, the difference with us, as opposed to Jesus, is that, see, Jesus chose you knowing every single mistake every single sin, every single thing that you were going to do from the moment you were born until you take your last breath, no one is disqualified. No one. He knows everything. So if you're here today and you've got guilt, shame, embarrassment, issues, things that you're going, yeah, but Jesus, I, I, 
you, feel, you, you need to come back to Jesus as a friend even. You've got to know he is not surprised about anything that you've done. Anything. He never looks down and says or looks at us and says, I can't believe she did that. Nope. Never. We do, though, don't we? I think T.L. does that to me a lot, actually. <laughs> I was thinking that. Were you thinking that? <laughs> we are very independent, um, alpha females to a certain extent. Any of you have friends like that? You know, you're like, you know that iron sharpens iron verse? I'm sick of that verse, actually. <laughs> I'm just sick of it. You know, I, after some, iron sharpens iron so much there's nothing left to sharpen. Um, no, really, that's how we grow and mature and grow up so that God can use us in this world to help others. And today we're going to introduce you to a couple of ministries and you're going to hear about people in this community of San Diego. Please... Let us know, and be, let's, let's all come together as friends to reach this community. Those who are hurting, those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who need to know Jesus. This is not just a message of come to know Jesus as your Savior. This is a message of how can we help you? How can we meet a need in your life? Because that's what Jesus did. That's what friends do, and that's what this is all about. So as we close out, do you have any final words? We've got a lot, a lot in store for today. So again, well, let me just reiterate one thing. Call your friends. <laughs> I tell her I'll let her talk in a minute. Call your friends. Let me know when you're Tell done. them to come down. Okay. Would you agree with me? Can we extend <laughs> yeah. that offer? Of course. Tell them to come. Go get them. Pick them up. Grab her, you know, just walk in. If they need to hear this afternoon or they need to hear a message, or they need to have prayer, take this opportunity to reach out to them, call them, and, um, and say, you know what, you need to be here for this. Because life-changing moments occur whenever we do these things and we let God take over. Yeah. I spoke, I had the privilege of really speaking to a lot of you because I was answering the secondary line. And I heard many of your stories and your testimonies and even why you are here today. And so what I want to do in closing is as we do bow our heads, I know that there's a lot of women here that are hurting. And, um, and I also know that there's a lot of people who are living in continual fear. And that's the place I started with the Lord, just so fearful to really know him personally. You're fearful to get close to God. You're fearful in life anyway. And so at what point can this all come together and just have a peace with yourself and with the Lord. So we want to pray for you today that struggling with your, not only your friendship with the Lord, but just your fear of getting close to him. So if you would bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to close in prayer. But we, before we do, if there's anyone here that wants us to pray for you because of your fear, Fear of failure, fear of money problems, fear about your children, fear about your relationship with God. Will you raise your hand, please? Okay, we see all of your hands. Okay, we see all of your hands. Okay, you can put your hands down. Now, if there's anyone here who, had, who knows they really don't know the Lord personally, they don't even know what that means to be a friend of God because it seems like such a foreign thought. I want to pray personally for you. Will you please raise your hand? Okay, I see okay. your hand. Anybody else? I see your hand. Anybody else? I see your hand. Anyone else? I see your hand. Anybody else? Okay, will you please pray with me? 
O oh Lord Jesus, I am so fearful to really know you. But I also know I don't want to live without you. Will you come into my heart? Will you open my ears to hear you? And Father, help me to learn to pray to you that we can have a relationship. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for saving me from myself. And thank you for promising me heaven. Fill me with your spirit and help me, Lord, to walk with you every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you, ha if you raised your hand that time, I want you to write it on that little card, okay? Because we're going to send you a book. So I'm going to need your address too. We might even have some here. I'll check at, okay. at lunch, okay? But put your address on that card, and I will mail you a book. Okay, so we're going to let Carol come will back Will you pray up? for those who are fearful, just in general? One more prayer? Yeah, that okay. was... Okay, one yeah. more prayer. One more. Let's pray. And then uh, where is uh, Gloria? Is Gloria around? Backstage. Gloria's backstage? Oh, okay, she's got the stuff. Okay, great. Heavenly Father, we do come to you now, Lord, and as, as, so many, uh, as so many people did raise their hands about the fear, mm -hmm. I just pray in Jesus' name right now that you would just be so ever-present in this room that right now you would send peace and hope and love and that the true love, the power of love that drives away all fear, where there is perfect love, there can be no fear. And you are perfect. And we ask for your perfect love to fill every heart here who raised their hands or who is struggling right now with fear. We will not allow it. We stand against it in the power and the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. And we all in agreement take that stand right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.